recreating an epic battle now on BBC Two with a team of Vickers taking control. In time, Commanders. A mighty Roman invasion force penetrates the dark, brooding forests of Germany. But hundreds of angry enemy tribesmen lurk in the trees, intent on slaughter. Will the Romans make it to safety? Or will their advance stop here in a bloody ambush? This week, a team of vicars, watched over by our military experts, find out on Time Commanders. Welcome to the show that can put you into the heat of battle anywhere in history. Ready for action tonight is a team of ministers from the south of England. Andy Caldwell worked as a lifeguard, a swimming teacher and a police officer in Hong Kong before entering into the ministry. I'd like the experts to look at our, our strategy and our tactics and I'd like them to be overwhelmed. I'd like to win this battle in a new way and a, and a better way that actually has them gobsmacked. Rob May has been canoeing in Arctic Scandinavia and can translate ancient Hebrew. It's going to be fascinating spending some time with the experts and to listen really carefully to the information they have to give us uh, as they give us some background uh, to the battle scene itself and to the historical context. Neil Durling hopes his wife and young daughter will see him win tonight. I think I might get a little heated at times if I feel I'm not being heard by the generals if I was a captain. Um, if I was a general it would be easier because I would be in charge. And Mark Redhouse is more likely to be seen wearing shades at the wheel of his sports car than in his Vickerley robes. I think we obviously got a chance of winning. Um, I don't know whether in practice we will. If I win, I'll be delighted. If we lose, I won't be too upset. Together, this religious band are tonight's Time Commanders. Welcome, gentlemen. It's great to have you on the show. I've got to ask, as ministers, what are you going to be able to bring to this? It is about fighting and stuff. Well, I think we uh, can be bold, we're good communicators, and I think actually we're a little bit aggressive. Really? Well, I mean, you have to be very aggressive. I'm just wondering how you're going to deal with the actual, well, a killing bit. We've all been in church meetings. <laughs> I think we can cope with it. They're rougher than I thought then, those occasions. Um, excellent. Well, it will get bloody and tough out there. It is only a game. It won't feel like it when we get stuck into it. Good luck to you all. All I can say as advice is pay attention in the early stages because every bit of information you pick up will be valuable when the battle starts. And keeping a watchful eye over our ministers in battle today will be our experts. Historical analyst Eric Nussbacher, senior lecturer in war studies at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and historical expert and author Mark Urban. OK, team, now this is the bit where you get to be the congregation and let our experts do the talking, and it's very important that you stand and listen. Remember I said information is crucial. This next bit is, because here comes your battle briefing. You are going to fight the Battle of Teutoburger Forest. It is the year 9, and you are going to be fighting near Kalkrise Hill in what's now Germany, near the town of Osnabrück. The man that Rome has sent to this area is Publius Quintilius Varus. Now, Varus is somebody who's been off in the Middle East, crucifying people, subduing rebellions, and that's essentially his role here too. He's been sent in to, as the Romans would see it, pacify this unruly area. The Roman army that's coming to sort Germany out consists of the 17th, 18th and 19th legions. The Roman army is a highly organized combined arms force. They know that if they can get through the forest to the open ground on the other side, then the terrain will be much more favorable to their style of fighting. And you will take on the role of Varus, the commander of this Roman army. You've got three legions and those three legions consist primarily of the good old Roman infantry armed with the throwing spear, the pilum, 
as well as with the short stabbing sword, the gladius, and they are armored with the segmented Roman armor. And you've also got some Numidian light horse, a long way from home, not wearing armor, but very, very good with that thrown javelin. The, uh, the Roman legion has as its main weapon its cohesion, its discipline, its ability to stay together in a set formation and cut into the enemy like a buzzsaw. In order to allow your legions to work properly, you need space. And this will be, for you, a fight for space. So, our team of ministers will be going down to the woods today as the Romans for a mighty clash with those German warriors. Do you know what? It sounds terrifying, actually. How do you feel? Terrified. Good, good. It does sound like just the whole idea of woods, and of course there will have been all those superstitions about it. It's going to be scary. Now, you do have an opportunity here because our experts are with us. You can ask two questions. Ask away. How do we stop ourselves getting bogged down in the woods? If you are an organized army in a reasonably compact formation and your enemy is vastly more numerous, they can flow around you. So you have to think about watching your flanks and watching your back. Are there any particular arms or armaments that we should really be aware of that the enemy are going to throw at us that are going to be very hard for us to counter? The main thing you've got to worry about is stuff that works well in woods. And that means you're going to be far more concerned with the enemy's speared men than you are about the enemy's cavalry. They have some cavalry, not going to be as big a problem in the woods because they can't get up momentum amongst the trees. I would look at it almost the other way round. The things that you have that could be a problem to the Germanic tribes. And that is that organization, many of your troops, your legionaries, with large shields and good armor, an ability if they stand shoulder to shoulder to resist pretty much anything that comes at them. Okay, well, that's it. No more questions to be asked, I'm afraid. You will be fighting the battle on your own. You actually do look quite scared there. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next thing to do, and this is very, very important, there can only be two generals and two captains. You don't get to decide it. The experts do. They study your profiles, and they make up their mind. And now is when we find out we'll be doing what. Our top tactic is to use our, our best troops to sap down the enemy's morale, um, to have a, uh, a light force that will be good at uh, lightning fast strikes, but our key will be getting them in, getting them out very quickly. Andy, you will be a general. Excellent. Neil, you will be a captain. Excellent. Rob, you will also be a general. Okay, thank you. And it doesn't take the brains of an archbishop to figure out that you will be a captain. Great. I think Andy will cope quite well, but uh, I think he wants us to win, so he'll be very focused. So while Neil and I um, start to smile, um, Andy will get very serious, I think. How do you reckon you're going to work as a team? I mean, we're expecting it to be peace and harmony and <laughs> cooperation. It's communication, I think. If we, as the captains, listen to what they tell us to do and don't get our own fancy ideas and they hear when we say that there are problems, then I think we should do okay.